Welcome to Frankly Speaking, the Good Friday edition. We are broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio right here on Marcus Street in Corning. Thanks so much for joining us. We are going to get to part two of our interview with the legendary Dwayne Eddy in just a little bit. We received a lot of great emails, a lot of great response overall on our Facebook, YouTube, uh, uh, the text messaging and the email. So there is the best way to contact us here if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or criticisms. We'd love to hear uh, from you. So I'll leave that up for just a second. We're going to get to uh, some of those emails here in just a little bit. Coming up after we talk with Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Dwayne Eddy, Corning native Dwayne Eddy, we're going to hear from Josh Feldberg. He is with Big Fox News at 10. He was at the 26th Annual Regional Leadership Conference yesterday. I joined him. We went up to CCC. Uh, this is put on by the Southern Tier Central Regional Planning and Development Board, and they have uh, conferences for you know mayors and town supervisors and people within the local government and uh, municipalities like that. So uh, the, the keynote speaker, excuse me, tongue-tied this morning, keynote speaker was uh, Congressman Nick Langworthy. And Josh had an opportunity to talk to him. And if you saw it last night, it was a really good uh, interview on the news. But he asked a, a specific question just for viewers of Frankly Speaking. Wasn't that nice of him? So uh, that'll be coming up in just a little bit. So again, we're going to take a short break. But Dwayne Eddy coming up in a little bit. When we come back from the break, I'm going to respond to some of those emails that we received. So stay with us. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Aikum, and we are broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. This is live every weekday morning starting at 7 a.m. I hope you're having a nice start to your good Friday. Let's take a look at some of the responses that we've received so far to the first part of our interview with Dwayne Eddy. This coming from Scott. He says, the conversation with Dwayne Eddy has been fantastic so far. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm curious if he has ever considered writing an autobiography. His stories and legacy should be saved for posterity. I know a lot of people would want to read it. I agree. Um, I know that that has come up in the past with conversations uh, that I've had with uh, Mr. Eddie, Dwayne Eddie. Um, so we will ask him in the future if he plans on writing an autobiography. But I couldn't agree more. I would love to hear even more stories from him and see really the beginnings of rock and roll and, and his amazing career and uh, the legacy that he's had our next is from oh yeah this was uh, anonymous thank you for having Dwayne eddie on your show of course i'm honored to have him on the program he is truly a living legend i couldn't agree more corning needs to do something to honor his contributions who do we need to talk to to get the ball rolling that is a great question and unfortunately i don't have the answer to uh, but i do think that is a very good point we do need to honor his contributions here in the city of corning uh, because of what he's done to uh, Make sure people are aware of Corning. That's one thing that I found when I was putting together the packet to send to the uh, Steuben County Hall of Fame, that when you look at his uh, biographies, when you look at his uh, publicity, all the stuff that they would send to you know concert promoters or uh, put on the back of album covers, always mentioned that he was born in Corning, New York. And I have been saying for a long time, and many of you have as well, that something needs to be done, whether it's a sign, whether it is a... A plaque somewhere uh, all of those are great ideas so if you have an idea or if you know someone that we should contact I know we've talked in the past with Mayor Boland about it and we've talked to some legislature uh, members uh, we'll, we'll try anything uh, we'll talk to anyone if we can get the ball rolling on this so I couldn't agree more with that uh, that person who wrote to us and if you want to write to us there you go let us know what do you think what should we do to honor Dwayne Eddy, because we're going to hear the second part of that interview uh, coming up in, in just a moment. But uh, I think that we can all really put some momentum behind this if we reach out to the right people or if we have our voices heard. And maybe that is uh, writing to the council, to the mayor, um, if that's the avenue you want to go down. I would, I would be supportive of it. So we'll find out more. We'll talk to some people, find out who we should be contacting and what we can do 
to honor Dwayne Eddy here in Corning. So let me take that contact information. Oh, I think you've seen that long enough. We do hopefully have a couple of news stories that we'll be able to get to at the end of the program. Like I said, Josh Feldberg will be joining us as well to talk uh, with, he talked with, excuse me, uh, Congressman Nick Langworthy. So that's a little bit later on after we talk with Dwayne. So let's take the next short break. Do I have, no, I do have a little bit of time. Um, what just to explain what uh, Josh is on the program for uh, that uh, Southern Tier Regional Planning and Development Board uh, conference was a CCC and what Josh did and this is very kind of him I went up with him and, and we heard the keynote speech uh, speech by Congressman Langworthy and it was a very good speech and Josh asked a specific question just outside of his normal newscast asked it just so uh, that frankly speaking viewers would have an exclusive question i thought that was very nice of him so we'll play that uh, in a little bit let's take that short break and then rock and roll hall of famer musicians hall of famer and corning native Dwayne eddie will be our guest here on frankly speaking and again i'm your host frank akam and we're broadcasting live from the hesselson studio on marcus street and corning stop by wave we'll be right back Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox. This is the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview, and we're broadcasting from the Hesselson studio. Our guest for day two, Dwayne Eddy. Thanks again for being on the show, Dwayne. It's so good to see you and talk with you. Well, same here, Frank. I uh, really have enjoyed our conversation. And it's great to speak to the people at Corning and Bath and everywhere around there. Mm -hmm. And our studios are right on Market Street, the beautiful downtown district. Oh, man, when I saw that a couple of years ago, I couldn't believe it. It's a beautiful city. It's a world-class market street, mm -hmm. world-class main street, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we have a, a nice uh, uh, main street here in Franklin, Tennessee, mm -hmm. but uh, I think that Corning one is just as good as any I've seen anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. like boutique stores. And yeah the shopping and just the the look of it is beautiful it is it's a and it's well, a beautiful born in i guess they did away with and they got a new one now yeah. was, i was too much for them so <laughs> they got rid of yeah Dwayne Eddy is our guest. So we were talking about the kind of the beginning of your career, milk career, career, but when you came up with the signature twangy sound, did you realize you had something special or was it something difficult to sell to people? Well, I didn't know at first. That I, that's just, I knew I had to have something different and something distinctive and something of my own. And as I said earlier, do it with authority and, uh, yeah. and with emotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, let it all hang out, and yeah. that's what I did. Whether I was rocking an up tempo song or or loving a slow ballad, you right. know, right? Just try to put everything into it, and uh, I guess people. Well, it's what a friend of mine said, I communicated with that sound. That's mm -hmm. why I had all those hits and everything. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I that's. Uh, just something I did naturally because I, all the country artists did that. And, right. Uh, and I thought there's no point in recreating something that somebody else did. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make that mistake. Sure. And a lot of people made it with me. I mean, they recreate, tried to play like me, but uh, sometimes and, um, I think uh, there's one guy that had some hits with the orchestra yeah. and my, but. Uh, other than that, most people just used it as a side instrument. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you'd, everybody would say, oh, that sounds like when they used to write on the charts in the studio, the, the uh, sessions, recording sessions, they'd, because uh, uh, one of the musicians and the uh, date that I wasn't on or anything to do with me, he uh, brought me a sheet of music once and he said, this is. This is a sheet of music I had. He was a guitar player too. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, the, uh, the arranger wrote this on the top. It says, solo, play Dwayne Eddy. <laughs> and, uh, so they knew, you know, they, it became a staple. Yeah. You probably talked with a lot of guitarists. I don't know if you worked with a lot of guitarists, but when you saw see a guitarist, do you 
I don't want to say judge them, but do you study them? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a big fan of Chet Atkins yeah. and Jake Burton and everybody that you can think of. Uh, Howard Roberts, uh, Barney Kessel. They were jazz players, but they worked on my sessions yeah. in the early days, and uh, uh, especially in Hollywood they did. And uh, not Trini, but, um, but yeah, I, uh, I know practically every guitar player in the business. Yeah. And uh, I've worked with most of them. Everybody from uh, like uh, the Stray Cats. Oh, sure. Cats, uh, oh uh, Brian Setzer? Brian Setzer, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get all of these names escape you. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I worked with him. I recorded with him. And, uh, well, let's see. Chet Atkins, I worked with him. Amazing. Not now, Travis. I didn't work with him, but I read him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin Offer, I didn't work with him, but I met him. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Jeff Beck, I got to work with him. Oh, wow. So, uh, for the rest of his soul. Yeah. He uh, came out, and we were out in California, and he was doing the. Uh, one show, and I was doing my show. He was doing a Cliff Gallup thing uh, for the all the musicians out there, mm -hmm. and I was doing my thing. Yeah. And then he came up with me and played the last song, and I said, I said to him, I said, take as many solos as you want. Yeah. <laughs> he says, no, I can only do two. He says, I got to catch a plane. <laughs> and sure enough, he did. He gave me a big hug around the neck, and then he was gone after the song was over, and uh, and I thought he was kidding, you know, making a joke, but I said, where did you go? He says, he jumped out of here, grabbed his guitar, and ran to the car, and he, he's just the airport by now. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, someone that, a lot of times, I think, you hear about most top-rated guitarists and underrated guitarists, to me... I think someone that's really underrated, and I think because a lot of his music was kind of humorous, was Jerry Reed. Oh, yeah. I, I love Jerry Reed and uh, told him so. Yeah. But uh, I never got to... Oh, yes, I did. I got to play at a friend's house. We sat there, and I oh. had my gut string, and he had his. Yeah. And uh, he started playing, so I picked mine up and kind of played rhythm along with him, and then we got in into uh, playing this song together and uh, so then I took it he took a solo and I took a solo and halfway through my solo I'm really you know I'm thinking boy <laughs> nobody's gonna like this as well as his yeah. as well as they like him and uh, but halfway through I heard him say son <laughs> I knew I made it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's when you knew you made it uh, yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne Eddy is our guest. You mentioned that you were in some Have Guns Will Travel, did some acting, that you uh, produced some albums. Does it still, at the end of the day, boil down to you want to play music, or do you like the behind-the-scenes stuff as well? I didn't care for the behind-the-scenes so much. Uh, I liked what was the music, yeah. producing film, and, and uh, things like that. But uh, the paperwork and the yeah. buttons and stuff, I... I need somebody to do, I need a secretary. <laughs> Not too good at it. I, I got it done. Mm -hmm. It's just a big waste of time, it seems like. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, yeah, it comes back to the music always. Yeah. I still like to do one more album, mm -hmm. and I may. Yeah. I got well, you were recently on the album with uh, Robert Plant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Robert and Allison. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was on the album. I did a TV spot for England. That's okay. That's okay. I knew I saw a clip somewhere. Oh, that's that's really neat. Uh, you have, by the way, the most amazing group of fans with the Dwayne Eddy Circle. Talk about great pictures, a great newsletter. I can't tell you how much I look forward to getting the newsletter. Oh, I know. Arthur does a great job. Mm-hmm. And those guys, Arthur and Jim Grant, Mike Richards, Philip Pell, yeah. they have a great time with their convention every year. Good. Now they're going to consume because mm. of the COVID thing. Yeah. But uh, they're just a great bunch. It's kind of 
we call it the inner circle. Yeah. Well, selfishly, I'm glad they do it over Zoom because before it was in England. Now I get to join, and so many people in our area get to join on and, and see our fellow fans. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is nice. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm really, really happy about that. Are you ever surprised some of the stuff that they dig up, like some of the pictures? And it always seems like they have something new that hasn't been seen. I know, and, and, and much of it. Yeah. Not, not terribly a lot, but quite a bit of it. Yeah. Stuff I hadn't seen. <laughs> and, no, uh, it's amazing. Things that I remember recording, but I haven't heard them since I recorded them. Right. They dig them up somewhere. They, they find them, that's for sure. Uh, we have a few other things we got to get to. Let me take, no, no, I'm good on time, actually. Um, what did it mean to you to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Was that ever on your radar? Oh, yeah. 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 I uh, was nominated probably as much as anybody. What was it? About 13 times? Oh, wow. Uh, eight times, I guess. Yeah. I was nominated to be in it. And finally, John Fogarty went up and says, look, this is... You need to put Dwayne Eddy in here. Yes. Yeah. One of the pioneers, and you haven't put him in. He should have been in several times years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got all mad. Don't tell us what to do. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and they barred him from coming into their offices for a while. Mm -hmm. But they finally got it done. He was going to induct me, but that's when they had the big earthquake. Oh, uh, and his house slid down the hills. He was all right. All his family was okay. Uh, but they did have damage to their house. Yeah. So he couldn't make it. But we uh, hmm. saw so, uh, a guy from Corner, Mick Jones, their guitar player, did the job. Mm -hmm. And did a nice job of it. And I played Rebel Rouser and made my own speech. And that was it. Yeah. Wow. But it was not. You're nice. John F. Kennedy Jr. is sitting right in front of me down there. No kidding. The and uh, I thought, my gosh, he sparkles. He's yeah. so <laughs> uh, clean and yeah. handsome. <laughs> he just, he had that charisma. That air, yeah. Yeah. We got to take a short break. Our first one, stay with us. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to WYDC TV Big Fox. This is Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frank Acom, and this is the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview, and we're being joined by the legendary Dwayne Eddy. Dwayne, thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. I'm very pleased to be with you. Thank you. Yes. So we've talked in the past about some of the, you mentioned Elvis and some of the legends you worked with. Is there anybody you wish you could have had an opportunity to work with? Ray Charles. Yeah. Uh, George Jones. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got to know George, and I found a song for him uh, called The Race Is On, which became a oh. staple of his. Yeah. The years, but I knew the songwriter in Phoenix and cut a demo and played it for George one morning. He came by my office, and uh, he said, Can I take that with me? And I said, Sure. Yeah. I thought I had the publishing on it, but it turns out the singer or uh, the writer had signed it with somebody else just before that. Oh, wow. So I didn't. And then, uh, anyway, yeah. that, that worked out great for him. Yeah. I was happy. Yeah, it skyrocketed his career in a, in a lot of ways. But did, in those days, because you were known for rock and roll, was it difficult for country to let you in the door, or was it mutual? Well, there were a lot of people, not the main people, and the guitar players and the musicians, they understood what I was doing, right. most of them. But a lot of them, a lot of people around them would say, I don't understand it. Chet Atkins plays all this great guitar, and Dwayne just goes down and down. <laughs> and he gets all these hits, and Chet don't get them. <laughs> and so I ran into that a lot. So yeah. People must have been that. Yeah. Things like that. When I know... But mainly now, I've lived here 30 years. Right five years and uh, it's the most heartwarming community mm -hmm. musicians and people 
the Musicians Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, of course. That's in Cleveland. And I may get into the Country Hall of Fame, I don't know, but I've done several things for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like played for, uh, they had a sound on the Marty Robbins record, Don't Worry About Me, it was the first buzz tone they declared. Yeah. And it was caused by a, a, a faulty uh, thing in the board. Okay. And made the guitar sound like that, but they left it. So uh, it became such a hit. But then when Grady Martin died, who was the guitar player that played it, one of the best ever. He played on El Paso and just, you can't imagine the stuff, different things he did that were so great. Yeah. Anyway, they wanted to honor him. So uh, Vince Gill sang, uh, sang uh, I think it was Vince sang the song from Marty Stewart. And, uh, no, it was, uh, uh, the girl. Mandy Burnett. Mandy Burnett. Uh, she sang it, and I played the fuzz tone guitar, and, and that was just fun. It was like we recreated the record. Yeah. Re yeah. And it was just uh, just a fun night. That was one thing I did. There been others. Yeah. Did did a trip with a steel player, Buddy Emmons, and oh, played it. Was it uh, an exciting, I guess, announcement when they said that you would be getting your own signature Gretsch, or was that a kind of, a, you, you should have one? Well, I thought that I, I wanted to have one back when I was having hits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, in the 60s. Yeah. But my manager wasn't too good at making deals, so he, I don't know how he presented it to me, but they turned it down, he said. And... Uh, Gibbs and turned it down, the Guild took it, so I had the first one was a Guild signature guitar. Okay. Then I met Chet, uh, with George Harrison introduced me to me, and uh, in London. And uh, so after that he contacted me and said, uh, well I didn't have a signature right then, and uh, he asked if I'd uh, like to have a great signature guitar, so I went down to Savannah and we, we put it together and I had one for a long time. And then he went with Fender, so I thought, I'll, I'll just go with Gibson. <laughs> I had a Gibson who wanted to have been dying to make me a guitar, yeah. Mike McGuire. And he, uh, he made me one and I loved it, but uh, that they weren't, Gibson was kind of wonky, <laughs> and uh, they didn't advertise it at all, so was, they, they sold it once and then they stopped selling, so mm -hmm. I talked to somebody at Gretsch and they said, you can always come back to us, you know, <laughs> and I said, well, I might be interested, so the next thing I know, I just got on the phone, and, yeah. and I, I left Gibson and went back to Gretsch, and mm -hmm. they made the uh, perfect guitar uh, of, uh, the imitation, of, what do you call that? The copy of my original. Oh, like a replica? A replica. Yeah. And the guy came, uh, the master builder, Luthier, uh, came here at the house and measured that guitar. And uh, that guitar, the original, is in Scottsdale in the musicians, in the music. Uh, musical Instrument Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. M musical Instrument Museum. Museum. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. And, and you mentioned you were introduced in the whole process when it came to uh, George Harrison. The Beatles were huge fans of yours, weren't they? Yes, they were. Yeah. And I worked with both Paul and, uh, and Ringo and George, all three of them. I didn't get to meet John. Hmm. And, uh, but I worked with Paul and, uh, 85 in my capital album, uh, Dwayne A. It's titled. Yeah. And uh, and with George and Jeff Mann, Roy Cooter, James Burton, yeah. John. <coughs> All of us were on that uh, very next one. Yeah. Just a great piano player and guitar player and yeah. harmonic player and bass player. He's a genius, and Jim Horn, of course, is such a player. Anyway, it was a fun album. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. We just had a great time. Yeah. Paul, Paul was great, and George, of course, I went up to his house and stayed, and uh, <clears throat> worked on it in his home studio, and uh, he added uh, um, a slide guitar. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, Ry Cooter was on this album, too. Yeah. And uh, he played slide. And uh, I, I love the difference between them. It's is very aggressive, and George is pure love. Yeah. You know, when they play, you can just hear the difference. Yeah. So I just had a great time. Oh, sure. Sure. Just before we go, because I know um, we're just about out of time on the program, but do you find yourself maybe sitting home at night and you turn on a movie or you turn on the TV and you're surprised because there's your song playing on some TV show or some movie? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I have done that. But yeah. the biggest surprise, we took our grandson to see Forrest Gump. Yeah. And he's about 12 at the time. And uh, I didn't know. We just had no idea that they put Rebel Rouser into that yeah. movie. Yeah. So we're sitting there, and it starts when Forrest, run, Forrest, run. And then down, 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 down. And he starts, takes off running. Runs through the football field. And yeah. Rebel Rouser played the, it was the longest cue in the movie, they said. Yeah. And they played all through that. And But while it was playing, my grandson jumped up on his seat, stood on his seat, and yelled out, That's my grandpa! <laughs> and we heard people around the theater laughing. It was very cute. Yeah. Oh, that's they, they didn't seem surprised in Nashville. No, no. Probably common occurrence. Do you hear Rebel Rouser in your head when you're sleeping at night? You've played it so often? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And when I do it on stage, I do it like it's the first time I've Yeah, been. yeah. There's some some people are hearing it for the first time. Sure. And, and uh, some people are... I try to make it sound like the original as close as possible so they recognize every note. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just fun to do. Yeah. Oh, it's a great song. It, it, it's so catchy that you'll have it stuck in your head the rest of the day as soon as you hear it, which has got to be a good thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, a friend of mine taught his kid this song, you know. Yeah. And then I went up to their office one day, and the kid was there. He was about 13 or so. And uh, his father had me play. He says, well, Dwayne played Rebel Rouse on acoustic here. And so I did. I played a verse of it, and he... He leaned over to his dad and he said, Dad, he didn't play it right. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tickle was bad to this. What a perfect way uh, to end this interview. Dwayne, I can't tell you enough how much it means that you gave me this much time today. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Frank, and good luck with your new TV show. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. On, and congratulations again on your election, I hope. That's right. Yeah, councilman. Pretty fancy. <laughs> did you take it or did you? Did I won. You I won, but I have I have to run for another term. So I have, um, because it was just an expired term. So now I have a four more years. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, good luck. And, Thank you. And everybody vote for the current. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I just found my new campaign ad. Thank you. <laughs> Dwayne Eddy's been our guest. Uh, we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio on Marcus Street. How nice is Dwayne Eddy? Such a wonderful guy, and I thank him for being on the program. And I want to uh, say a special hello to anyone from uh, Dwayne Eddy Circle that's uh, tuning in or watching us on YouTube after the fact. Dwayne Eddy Circle, if you are a fan of uh, Dwayne Eddy like many of you are, I would highly recommend joining the group. It's a... Uh, they don't call it a fan club necessarily, but essentially that's what it is. And they're what a great organization. I can't wait uh, when they send out the uh, newsletter. It's it's like a magazine basically, and gives you insight into Dwayne and insight into the, kind of the time and some pretty amazing photos and stories. So and memorabilia, photos of memorabilia. So I would highly recommend if you are a Dwayne Eddy fan to join the circle. Uh, 
Also, and I know I, I keep mentioning this, but if you have any ideas on how we uh, can uh, pay tribute or honor, however you want to word it, uh, Dwayne Eddy uh, here in Corning, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you are somebody in elected office and you say, oh, I think I have an idea on who we need to talk to or what we should do, what avenues we should go down. That's the best way to contact me. I would love to hear from you because I think we need a sign, a plaque, something. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, local organizations that would love to be a part of that. So please contact me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. All right. So I mentioned uh, coming up in a little bit, we're going to hear from Josh Feldberg. He was at uh, Corning Community College yesterday. Uh, I joined him. Uh, we rode up together to hear Nick Langworthy, our congressman, speak. Uh, it was at the 26th Annual Regional Leadership Conference held by the Southern Tier Central Regional Planning and Development Board. Uh, and he asked our congressman a question just for you, frankly speaking, viewers. So that's coming up in just a little bit. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. If this is your first time tuning into Frankly Speaking, maybe this week was because you had spring break or today's Good Friday, maybe you have Good Friday off. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us and I hope that you'll make us a part of your routine every morning because we're weekday mornings at seven here on Frankly Speaking. We have a couple of news stories we're going to get to uh, in just, well, you know what? I do have, a, I have a minute, so let's go to the news. We've been talking about the New York State budget, which of course uh, uh, still delayed. Uh, it was due April 1st. Of course, today is the 7th. Uh, we're sounds like no closer but i i've talked about the the big hurdle is making a minor change a minor change to bail reform uh and just to show you the opposition how vocal they are when i say opposition i should say really they're pro uh this bail reform and and all the safety issues that is brought with it because they are more concerned about uh, if we want to boil it down, more concerned about the, the criminal than those uh, the citizens in, in their community. So they're very outspoken and, and they're trying to do everything they can to keep bail reform the way it is. Now, you know, whether you voted for Zeldin or not, you know Zeldin did very well. You know uh, others throughout the state did very well. And it was on the back of demanding reform to bail reform. But this is to show you the, the ferocity the, I don't know, the, the complete adherence to this bail reform. Listen to this. Brooklyn Assembly Member, uh, Latrice Walker. She's out of Brooklyn. She is going on a hunger strike for the second year running. Now, uh, the, uh, obviously, I don't think I need to say that that has not continued for two years. This is just the second time she done, has done this. It must be her kind of MO uh, to... I don't know, go on a hunger strike to prove her point. She says that she is not going to eat starting Easter uh, on Sunday until uh, this is uh, essentially off the table, until they take bail reform whatsoever off the table. Where was the exact quote? She said, I submit that I'll do another hunger strike beginning on Easter Sunday in honor of all the people who have had a conversation, who I've had a conversation with who are depending on us because she was at Rikers Island. This is what I will submit to do. That's an interesting way of putting that. She said it twice. This is what I will submit to do. To speak on behalf of these people who are not criminals, but who have been accused and charged with a crime and awaiting their day in court. That's, that, that whole sentence is kind of interesting, isn't it? <laughs> who are not criminals, but who have been accused and charged with a crime and awaiting their day in court. Does that necessarily make them not criminal? Uh, we are asking for our colleagues to hold strong and fast. We don't have to do this. We don't have to play these political word games and put justice, fairness, and integrity on the line. So that's the kind of opposition that Governor Hochul has against making minor changes. This is going to be a tough one. I, a lot of people have already suggested that it could go past uh, this first extension, which I think is the 10th, it goes to the 10th, uh, we could see another extension. Uh, Governor Hochul is not uh, taking that off the table. So let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to hear from Josh Feldberg from Big Fox News at 10. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV. Big Fox broadcasting from the Hesselson studio on the beautiful Good Friday, overlooking Marcus Street right now here in downtown Corning. 
Uh, so Josh Feldberg from our Big Fox News at 10. You can watch that at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, he and Maggie Hall do a great job uh, on the news. Well, he was at the 26th Annual Regional Leadership Conference. It's kind of a mouthful. Uh, brought to you by the Southern Tier Central Regional Planning and Development Board. The guest speaker, the keynote speaker, was Congressman Nick Langworthy. Uh, so Josh and I rode up to CCC to uh, watch the keynote, and Josh did a great interview with him. If you missed it last night, you missed a really good interview. But he saved one question that wasn't in the broadcast just for viewers, uh, frankly speaking. And it's kind of in reference to an interview we had with Assemblyman Phil Palmisano talking about uh, the state with these uh EV laws, electric vehicles, and some of the energy policies uh, that we have here in New York. And we saw the other day that Governor Hochul tried to change some of those rules, uh, but was instantly shot down. Even Governor Hochul saying it's going to cost uh, us too much uh, with the increased price in energy. It's just going to be too big of a burden on the residents. But the other uh, politicians in Albany, the Democrat side, said, no, we're, we're not uh, – that's a no-go. We're not, we're not even going to look at that. We have to continue with these strict uh, regulations on greenhouse gases and, and these green energy programs. So anyway, uh, I'm rambling here. But uh, Josh asked the congressman this question, so we'll go over to our friend Josh Feldberg from Big Fox News at 10. My name is Josh Feldberg with Big Fox News, and yesterday I had the chance to talk with Congressman Nick Langworthy and ask him a question exclusively for Frankly Speaking. One of the topics you brought up in your speech had to do with energy policy and EV, EV vehicles. You know, how do you think that's going to affect the 23rd district in the coming years? Well, I think our, our climate here in, in Western New York is a very harsh one. I mean, the southern tier, you know, we have a lot of storms, we have a lot of snow. I mean, I, I mentioned the Buffalo blizzard a lot because uh, it, it was a storm that had deadly consequences. Uh, someone in an EV vehicle stuck in a ditch would not have fared as well as someone that had a gas-powered engine. Um, I believe fossil fuels are here for our lifetimes. We need to bridge to uh, greater efficiency. Uh, there is certainly a role for, for uh, EVs, uh, but the technology has to get much better. I just see uh, news out of Buffalo today that you know the Regional Transportation Authority bought 10 electric buses with a lot of federal funds last year. Well, guess what? They're all heading back to the manufacturer because there's something wrong with them, and they're on recall. This technology is evolving. It's growing. It, it will be there someday. But, you know, large capacity battery technology is not there for a predictable, um, you know, usage day in and day out long miles. And that's the thing. When you live in the southern tier, you drive further than 10 miles to work most of the time. Um, it's tough to find, you know, EV vehicles with long range capacity. And, uh, you know, a Ford Lightning, for instance, on its best day might get 280 miles, you know, 300 miles. Well, if you, if you travel a lot for work, and that's under ideal circumstances, if you travel a lot for work, that's not going to hold up. And the battery capacity diminishes every single day you own the vehicle. So these are things that have to get better before we're going to see um, them be a solution for all Americans. But they're also extremely expensive. Our economy and, and, and people are having a, a tough time making ends meet right now. I mean, we're heading towards a recession. The idea that we are going to be able to have everybody in a sixty, seventy thousand dollar EV, it's not realistic. I live in the world of reality and trying to instill common sense into public policy. So Let's set a goal to get there by a reasonable fashion when the technology makes it affordable for most Americans. Don't put mandates down that are going to make families stress out, uh, have real uh, you know, issues uh, budgeting. I mean, some of the mandates coming from Albany on, on home heating, gas, I mean, this is stuff that uh, is going to drive more and more people out of New York. It just the, the, the end result. And, and I don't want to see us lose another resident of the Southern Tier that we don't need to lose. It's been our cold, hard reality for far too long. We need to keep our people here and together. Thank you to the Congressman and thank you to Josh Feldberg from Big Fox News at 10. Don't miss that every weeknight. We've got to take a short break. Stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking on WYDC TV. Big Fox, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Frankly Speaking. We're running just a little late, so I'm coming up on another uh, short break. But I wanted to remind you that you can always contact us if you have anything about the topics that we bring up throughout the day, anything about the news, something you'd like to see me focus on, or maybe suggestions for guests. So here's our contact information. I know I put this up on the screen quite frequently, uh, but again, this is about the community. It's about uh, you being a, po a part of this, being a voice uh, right here in our community and making our community a stronger, better place. So please contact me. That's a, the easiest way to reach me by text or by email. One more quick break and then we'll wrap up today's edition of Frankly Speaking. So stay with us. We're back with Frankly Speaking. A couple of quick, quick, quick stories uh, because we're almost out of time. And boy, this show went quick. How many quicks can I say in one segment? All right. This is, I don't know if you're following the free speech issue on college campuses and elsewhere. We've seen protests uh, throughout the nation uh, that have led to, to violence and um, shutting down people with uh, different opinions than what would be deemed the norm on college campuses. Specifically, SUNY Albany had protesters march, dance, and, boy, tough to mention this on Easter weekend, destroy Bible. They destroyed a Bible to shut down a conservative speaker. The speaker, I'm not familiar with him, but he's from Turning Point USA, uh, Ian Hayworth. Uh, people chanting, saying this is what free speech looks like. It's interesting, that's free speech, but allowing the guy to speak stopping that from allowing him to speak is not an infringement on free speech. It gets kind of confusing when you try to follow the logic. But I mention this because out of uh, Cornell and Stanford, but Cornell right down the road, uh, they're standing up for free speech because the student assembly there uh, voted for unanimously, voted to require trigger warnings for traumatic classroom lessons. Now, if you're not sure what that is, a trigger warning is essentially saying there could be something bad coming up uh, that could trigger a memory. You know, it could be something about domestic violence, self-harm, child abuse, something like that. Some things that come up in class. Uh, the trigger warnings might be well-intentioned as the post writes, uh, but it, it, it to protect sensitive students, but many find it a way to self-censor. Professors end up self-censoring or people in general on campus self-censor. So, the Cornell president, Martha uh, Pollack, and Provost Michael Kotelkoff responded to the student assembly with saying, no, uh, this is uh, an unacceptable limit, uh, or uh, unacceptable uh, infringement, excuse me, on uh, free speech, and it leads to self-censorship. I know I had to get to those quick because now I'm, I'm late. Have a great Easter, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Please join us on Monday for Frankly Speaking, starting at 7 a.m., here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Have a great weekend.